Hey everyone, in this video we're going to create an animation like this together right inside After Effects. So if you're ready, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give the video a like. And if you want to get the project file for free, just share the video and drop the word project in the comments. So I'll send you the download link. And if you're serious about learning After Effects in a fun, practical way, you should definitely check out the Motion Hero course. I start from scratch and go all the way to advanced motion design, step by step with tons of hands-on practice. Alright, let's get into the tutorial. In the first step, we'll create our desired text. Then we'll center it on the screen using the align panel. Now we want to use the pastiche plugin to form this text with lots of tiny circles. So I'll select the ellipse tool, pick a color I like, and double click the ellipse tool icon. Then I'll go into the ellipse settings and set the size to 15 for both width and height. Now it's time to duplicate our circle manually several times. I duplicated it 10 times. Now I'll select all 10 and duplicate them again 10 more times, making a total of 100. We'll need approximately 500 to 600 circles in total. Now that the circles are duplicated, our texture is basically ready. We just need to select the text and apply the pastiche effect to it. Make sure the source layer is set to the actual text layer. In the transform section, set the position option to grid, then click the create button. As you can see, the circles now appear in the shape of our text but the position is slightly off because the text coordinates don't match the main composition. To fix that, we can pre-compose the text layer and apply the pastiche effect to the pre-comp instead of the text itself. I'll click Create again, and this time the circles are aligned exactly with the text. Now we can just hide that composition you might notice the number of circles isn't quite right and the text doesn't form properly. We can test this by adding or removing a few circles. Each time, just try reducing the number and clicking create again to see if it improves. Or we can even try increasing the number of circles and clicking create again. This way, we can adjust it until we reach the look we want. Once the design looks the way we like, it's time to bring it into the Newton plugin and apply some physics to create the effect we're aiming for. But before that, we need to create the object that will interact with our particles. So I'll go ahead and create a white circle right here. Before jumping into Newton, we'll animate this white circle to give it some motion. To make it move naturally, we can use the Motion Sketch tool. I'll open the position of the layer, click Start Capture, then drag and move it around the way I want. Now it's time to enter Newton. From the Composition menu, we choose Newton. Inside Newton, the first thing we'll do is select all objects except the white ball. And under the General tab, Set their type to Aomatic. As for the white ball, we'll set its type to Kinematic. If we hit play, you'll see the animation is close to what we want, but we still need to tweak a few settings. As you saw, the circles are falling downward, which shouldn't happen. To fix this, we go to the Global Properties panel and set the Gravity Magnitude to zero. Now everything behaves the way we want. Since the yellow background and all the joint lines are distracting, let's turn off the joint's visibility using the icon. This way, we only see the blue circles. 
But as you can see, the circles are behaving a bit messily, and we need to reduce how much they affect each other's movement. To do this, select all the circles, go to the advanced section, assign them to group B, and disable collision between group A and group B. Now the circles no longer affect each other. But this also means the white ball no longer affects them either. So we need to do something else now. We'll select the white ball and in the advanced tab, enable magnetism. Then under type, we choose repulsion. Now when we hit play, you can see the ball is pushing the blue circles around again. This time, it creates the magnetic repulsion effect, spreading the circles and then letting them return to their original position. To enhance this effect and improve the motion, we'll select all the blue circles again and set the damping value under general to 10 and also set aromatic tension to 10. You can see the effect is slightly better, but we can still tweak it. Let's reduce the intensity value. Let's drop it to 50. Actually, I think setting it to 10 works even better. Now, the result looks much cooler as if the ball is gently pushing particles out of the text as it moves through it. Now it's time to render our scene. For the export panel, we simply click the render button. Finally, everything is still editable. If you don't like the final movement of the ball and want to change it, just delete the existing position keyframes and draw a new motion path. With or without motion sketch, it doesn't matter. Next time you enter Newton again, the new motion will be applied automatically. And just like that, we've created this cool animation using Newton as if we're animating real particles. I hope you found this tutorial fun and useful. Thanks for staying with me until the end, and I'll see you in the next video.